Welcome everyone, it is nice to have the opportunity once again to, to share with you some uh, reflections that help can help us in our spiritual life. And I want to talk today briefly about some of the difficulties we encounter when we pray. Why do we pray? We pray because it is the way we expose ourselves to God's loving presence. And by doing so, we are seeking and finding, as scripture bids us to do so, the kingdom of God within us. We want to not only seek and find, but we want to love him that he may find delight in our self-offering. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father, he will grant it to you. And so if we are faithful uh, to prayer, God will give us what we truly need. And every time we pray, God um reveals to us um, more and more of his loving presence what do you want my friend god is asking each one of us and if our answer simply is O oh lord i come before you as a child seeking your loving embrace do with me whatever you will then we are praying in the spirit. We are praying as we ought to pray. Of course, sadly, um, a lot of people don't understand what prayer is, really. Or they think the prayer is like turning on a tap. You turn the tap on, if you want water, and then you turn it off again. Well, prayer is not like that. But of course, some people um, <clears throat> think uh, that um, the, that um, the God they seek in prayer is, is um, different from the God who is with them, whether they realize it or not, throughout the rest of the day. Our life is a whole, and we are a unity, and we seek to realize more deeply and reflectively the person who, who, we, really are, who we really are. And regular prayer deepens that reflectivity and awareness uh, in the loving presence of God. But of course, um, often we get distracted in prayer, um, and that distraction and that uh, comes from um, not having a mind that is sufficiently quiet to enable our heart to be open to God. A lot of mental chatter and noise. But that's largely comes about through what happens to you outside the times of prayer. So the answer lies what happens in prayer depends upon what happens outside of prayer. You see, when we come and um, before the Lord in, in prayer, prayer is like a mirror that we that is held up, um, and in which we see ourselves as we really are, not the me that so often is hidden 
through activity and the mental chatter of the rest of the day. So often, though, we choose to ignore the real, uh, real self and, and lacking a spirit of uh, reflectivity thereby which we are more recollected, is it uh, surprising that we find prayer um, difficult? So many distracting thoughts um, crowd in uh, upon our time of prayer. We are in the loving presence of God, whether we realize it or not. But to gain uh, fruit uh, the, the Holy, by the Holy Spirit that inspires us to open our heart to God, uh, we need to have a greater awareness of his loving presence. So prayer isn't like a tap that you can turn on and off, as many people think. And those people who regard prayer as some kind of um, turning to God when you're desperate, or in order to have nice, uh, comfortable feelings, or something you do when you go to church, I uh, um, haven't even um, stepped on the first rung of the ladder of prayer. But once uh, one's uh, uh, consciousness is awakened by God's Holy Spirit, one sees that uh, prayer is such a li like is it is the loving embrace of God that encapsulates everything. Prayer is God's loving embrace in everything I am and do. Well, when we come to um, setting side times of prayer we will to a degree uh, often encounter difficulties we will encounter distraction but those distractions will become less and less when we are the same um, outside of prayer as we are in it What are some of the things that cause um, distractions in prayer? Well, uh, as I said, it comes from um, not thinking more reflectively outside of prayer so that our life is a series of actions with no, uh, and with no awareness of what they are and what they what what impact they have upon our state of well-being our bodily state our mental state our spiritual state that means our life is undisciplined um, is in disorder it's chaotic so if we bring uh, that state of uh, um, chaos with us in prayer, then we do not understand the distraction is partly our own doing. Now, in, even if we are in a more state of under, uh, tranquility and understanding in a more recollected way, um, our whole time and day, and gathered together in a single point in prayer, 
we will sometimes struggle and uh, and this struggle in prayer these distractions will come but we mustn't worry about them we mustn't uh, get uh, try to resist these distractions in a um a violent uh, way but quietly uh, res resist them without impatience just turning our eyes towards God and just thank him uh, for the for the wonder of his beauty and creation and his indwelling uh, within us the longing and loving heart that turns towards God despite distractions to, to, to temptation um, will be blessed by God. Because it's not necessarily what we get out of prayer, it's just giving ourselves to God that gives us peace ultimately. So if we live a life that is full of anxiety and worry and distraction, we don't give ourselves time during the things that we do to reflectively think upon what we're doing, um, then our real self is stifled and hidden and is buried under, under all this mental chatter. But that's the same, that's the self we would bring to prayer if we did not um, think sufficiently upon our actions um, in the rest of our day. You see, in prayer, we are our, we are who we are before God, not the false self, the hidden self, but the real self. Of well, see, in prayer, we it's like holding up a mirror. You see yourself as you really are. And uh, if you don't uh, acknowledge who you really are before God, then God can't change you. God can't mould you. God can't lead you. So that's what we wish. We wish to God to take hold of us and to show us um, uh, about more about himself and about ourselves in relation to him. There are three main things that um, cause us um, to be uh, distracted in prayer. And um, now I just want to make it clear that distractions come to everyone in prayer and it doesn't really matter I mean how advanced in prayer one may be um, they come but the degree to which they come is largely a result of the life we live outside of prayer time if we are more recollected during the rest of the day, then our prayer will be less subject to distraction and temptation. And uh, there are three main causes for um, this, um, why we experience um, temptation and distraction. Um, first of all, the devil. Um, let us remember 
our Lord went into the wilderness for forty days and nights and was tempted by the devil. But of course, our Lord put the devil um, in his place and told him that he that um, to, to to depart. And uh, why does the devil seek to interfere or by in our life? Uh, by trying to discourage us from pray praying? Well, because he is envious of the good. He is jealous of the good. Because he is uh, of the darkness and sees uh, us, um, um, see you or me, making a serious uh, advance towards the light of God's love, he wishes to do all he can to discourage you by distracting you and causing you to abandon prayer, to give up. Let us, however, not be deceived by this but to remain faithful to prayer, rem identifying ourselves and kneeling in prayer with our Lord in the wilderness and in the Garden of Gethsemane, to do the will of God and not to do our own will, just as our Divine Lord sought and did the will of his Father in heaven. The devil's main object is not necessary to, to cause us to commit a particular sin, but as to rather cloud and, and distract our mind and to, to spo by spoiling our prayer and causing us to abandon it, then he has succeeded. My dear friend, never abandon prayer because if we abandon prayer, we leave Jesus. Let us leave everything else, but let us not leave Jesus. For so ultimately, in the air, uh, no matter what we have in this life, whether they met, whatever material possessions we have, whatever friendships we have. Ultimately, when death comes, we leave it all, everything behind, but we don't leave God, for he is still with us. And in prayer, we stay with Jesus because he wants to love you and to show you more about how it is to be who the person you really are in his love. A second difficulty in prayer, um, or rather one of the second causes of difficulty, as I talked briefly about it before, an undisciplined life. Well, if my life is uh, full of mental chatter because I haven't got a, a lead a disciplined life, or should we say a more reflective life? Remember, as I've said, we are the same person uh, well, that we come to prayer, when we come to prayer, as we are outside of prayer. So, we can go along all day in disguise, deceiving ourselves, but we can't be deceived or we cannot face ourselves truly um, the false self, when we are exposed uh, to God 
in quiet prayer. We must try, therefore, to produce uh, our, uh, to live a life that's more reflective. So when whatever we do, it doesn't matter what it is, if we do it more um, reflectively, then we will understand that our life is a unity and that the person you are at this moment is the same person you will are in prayer. But prayer, the difference is, my friend, that opening our, ex ourselves to the love of God in prayer time gives us the capacity to change ourselves and who we really are before God. The quieter the, quieter the mind is, the more open the heart is to the love of God. So distractions will come in prayer. We, all the saints experienced distractions they often struggled with them but it wasn't a result of an undisciplined and unreflective life it was because the devil um, as i said earlier is jealous and envious of the soul who takes seriously the transforming power of the awareness of the love of God for he is all darkness but the light of the Lord exposes all that is um, <clears throat> that wishes us to, to uh, give up praying my dear friend do not give up praying. Don't worry about distractions, but use, but understand and reflect more, more that the person I am outside the times of prayer is the person I bring to prayer. And the prayer isn't like a tap that it can be turned on and off according to my uh, convenience. Prayer exposes us to the love of God and that exposing ourselves to the love of God means that there's always that transforming action of God and slowly by slowly, we will see more and more the capacity of prayer to change who I am so that I may discover who I am in the light of his love. God bless you, my friend. And I hope you have found this uh, reflective talk of help and uh, until we meet again, may the Lord guide you and bless you in all you do, give you his uh, strength and grace uh, to do his will. Bless you.